Yes, I'm recording now. Okay. Uh, one night, Mrs. McMullen uh, answers the door to see her husband's uh, favorite or best friend, Patty, standing on the door. She says, hello, Patty. But where's my husband? He went with you to the fab beer factory today. Where is he? <laughs> Patty shook his head and he says, ah, oh, Mrs. McMullen, there's been a terrible accident at the beer factory. Your husband fell into a vat of Guinness Stout and drowned. Uh -oh. <laughs> My goodness. Oh, Mrs. McMillan cried. Oh, tell me, did he go quickly? <laughs> Patty shakes his head and says, no. He got out three times to go to the bathroom. <laughs> 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 All right. Oops. Somebody's got two two speakers or somehow. Uh, I'm going to uh, mute everybody. And you know how to unmute. <clears throat> All right. Um, this is the first of a series of four uh, classes we're going to be having. Today, we'll spend some time on Siri, Calendar, and Safari, and of course, answer questions. And the questions don't necessarily have to be on one of those four, three subjects. And on the 12th, we'll have one on email, working with news and weather. On the 19th, we'll have one working with notes, fonts, airdrop, and messages. And on the 26th, we'll talk about storage and transferring photos and getting music to your iPhones and iPads. And with that, I'll start off with uh, Siri. Um, does every by a show of hands, and do you know how to show a hand? I think, I think there's a feature on your screen that allows you to put a little hand up. And I've, with a show of, or put up your hand. <laughs> do you have your name in contacts? Your name in your contacts, yes? I'm not seeing everybody's hand. <laughs> BJ, I see yours. <laughs> and Anne and got mine, got yours too. Okay. If you don't have your name in contacts, I'll just spend a minute on adding somebody to contacts and I'd like you to put your name in there. Right? If, and I'm going to bring up my, uh, I'm going to start sharing my screen here. Mine is in there twice. One of it says me by it, and that one has indicates that Siri's found it. In the one that has me by it is the one we want to talk about. Should I delete the other one? You can do you, uh, you might want to. Okay. Okay, do you see my two screens on yours? Somebody say yes or no? Yes. yes. Okay. So I've got the iPhone one place and the I, uh, iPad the other. We have both. 
Good, thank you. So if we go to contacts and you, and you hit the plus sign, right, like so, can you see my mouse pointer? Yes. Yes. And you can see the little dot as well? Yes. Okay. Yes. The little dot is um, my mouse on the iPad. And you just fill in your first name and last name and maybe an email address and phone number and then click done. And that puts you in there. And the reason I want to do that is when we talk about Siri, Siri functions much better if it can identify you. And when it identifies you, it, it identifies all your information, like your address, your phone number. And there are places in your contacts, and there I have a contact up. And if I click edit on that one, on my iPad, and I scroll down the list, there's places to put in birthdays, There's places to put in uh, relatives, add relatives names. I got somebody in the background. Okay. And the more information you put in your contact, for example, if I said to, to my iPhone, call my son, and he was in there as my son in my contact, it would automatically call my son. And I'll show you how that works a little later. But the more information you can put in here, the better. The one I speak up a little bit. I can't hear you very well. The one I have indicates send message, share contact, and add to favorites as well, and they're in blue. Say that again. It says send message, share contact, add to favorite, and they are in blue. Where are you? I'm on the contact page with my name. Okay. The, uh, <laughs> so here's my name in contacts. I just I'm not sure. I have I have to do one thing here. Okay, if I go to my name and contacts. And, I, and where are you talking about it now? Leah, you're muted. Bill, at the bottom of where you are is where she's talking. At the bottom of the yeah, screen? Yeah. Going down. Almost to the bottom of the screen. It says down a little bit okay. farther. Okay, you can send a message to yourself <laughs> in this okay. case, or you can share this contact information with somebody else. Okay. That's what that's all about. All right. And then I also have to show medical ID. You also have a lot. Yeah. Speak up a little bit. I, I can also add to favorites and then sh I have show medical con medical ID with an right. asterisk. And when I, okay. You can do that. Okay. I, I'm with you now. Thank you. Okay. Okay. 
All right, so let's everybody now go to settings. Nobody's still on. There you go. Bill, I'm not on the same page you guys are on. So how do, how do I get to contacts in the left-hand column from the home screen? Oh, you go to your contact information, people. It's the one with the little person on it. If you look at the iPhone there, it's this little... Uh, Icon. I don't even see that on my. Okay, you you just go on with the rest of them. I'll try uh, to find I, it. I'm going to take this opportunity to. Um, if you can't find contacts, and it's, I can't seem. Oh, there it is on mine down here. Oh, okay. But if you can't Hello. find it. Yes. <laughs> if you can't find it, you click in the middle and pull down. Okay. Okay. I and found you, it. I just didn't know what that I thing was. Hold so. on. And then you type in C O N T. And it should show up in this list right here called applications. And there's content. So if if you're like me and have 300 apps or so, sometimes you can't find the app you're looking for. Okay. I, I did I did find it now and I'm, I'm up with the group. When you... Okay. 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 And I'm in here, so I, I thought that I was. All right. Now, everybody, let's go to settings. And it says Siri and search. Let me click on that. And the first option there is. Bill, yes. excuse me. There are several people that are un unmuted and they are causing a, a screeching noise. Yep. yep. Thank you. I got it. <laughs> You're welcome. Some of us can't hear that. <laughs> Listen to Hey Siri. Listen for Hey Siri would be the first thing you want to make sure you have on if you want to use the feature. You're able to say H E Y S I S S I R I and your Siri will automatically, the Siri application will automatically be invoked. Okay, press the button to get Siri. Allow Siri when locked. On my iPad, I have it on. On my iPhone, I have it off, for example. If you're going to be speaking English, If you change that, by the way, if you go to and you pick another language, be sure you can speak it. Okay. Siri voice, what's it going to speak to you in? Right, and I have mine set for Aussie female. I just like that accent. Make sense? Now, in, in, if you have that set as a female, the next one can't be changed. It has to be always, because the women always have the last word. <laughs> You're not, that's supposed to be, no, never forget, right? You know, you a question? Yes. Uh, what's the logic to, that you applied for choosing one of your devices to have uh, Siri when locked and the other not? None, <laughs> just experimenting. Some okay. people don't like it when it's locked because anybody in the room can say H-E-Y-S-R-I if it's oh, locked yeah. and they would, they would 
your phone would come up and want you to start Siri. Oh, okay. Thank you. Right? Now here's the important one, my information. In order for Siri to know who you are, you have to click the arrow here and go down and select your name from the list of contacts. Okay, and if the word me is beside that name, that's the one you've already picked. So if I go down here, there's the Bill Crow I selected to be my contact reference. If your name is already in there, that means that's happened? Yes, that means you've already done that. Thank you. Okay. I have all the Siri suggestions turned on so that the Siri will be looking when I when I do other things. Whoa. <laughs> I'm on it. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Siri. <laughs> all right. And down here, Siri can make suggestions in apps. And when you use search, look up and uh, and oh, look up and keyboard. Right? So if I said, hey Siri, open Bang Bang. <laughs> I don't see an app called Bang Bang. <laughs> you could try searching the app store. Oh, Big Bang. Hey Siri, open Big Bang. And it opens that particular application. All right. So now we have Siri established. We have it set up. And so the first thing I'd like to do is point out to you there is all kinds of things Siri can do for you. Hey Siri, how are you today? Not too shabby. Thanks for asking. Now, you see I've got this screen up when I said hey Siri. Whoops, I want to get it back again. I know you're listening. When this screen is up, you'll notice that there's a little question mark down here. And if I click that little question mark, this screen shows up. And it says, gee, I'm Siri. And these are the different applications you can get to really easily with me. And you can do various things with them. For example, <clears throat> if I want to record a message, I can say, let me do one for my son. Tell David I'll be right there. Tell David I'll be right there. message. Ready to send it? Uh, I could say S-E-N-D. Sorry. <laughs> Messages will continue with your request. <laughs> All right. Bill, that list of apps that came up, that you established that list, or Siri automatically can do those? Whenever you load an app that works with Siri, it will add that list there. Okay, thank you. It will add to that list. 
Bill? Well, yes. What, what if you had more than one David in your contacts? You, you told I only have one you. David in my name's contacts. Okay. It, but maybe I don't. If I would have said instead, send Mike a message. Uh huh. What do you want to say? Hmm. But if you had more than two mics in there. Well, how would it know which mic? Oh, more than two. Which? Oh, I see. <laughs> it was going to send that message. Uh huh. Send Mary a message. What do you want to say? No, oh, I got that one wrong. Here's your message. <laughs> okay. Let me know if there's anything else you need. I think if it's more than one, it'll come up and ask you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I could say, now, because I put my son's name in there as my son under my contacts, under my contact information, and my wife's in there too. So if I say, call my wife, right? Watch. Call my wife. Calling Happy Mobile. I'm going to cancel that. <laughs> Did you get the idea? This doesn't sound like a silly question. Is there an app that's on your? I'm using a phone on the phone that is Siri, or is it just there? It's just there. There's no app called Siri. And you won't see anything on your phone, on your on your desktop. Correct. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, I walk into the doctor's office, and you know they always hand you that little card. And so if I click on, and I say the word schedule, it will automatically know that I'm putting in a calendar. So if I say to Siri, schedule Dr. Jones next Tuesday at 10 o'clock. It's on your calendar on September 15, 2020 from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Okay, so it was that easy. Wow. And if I wanna know other, uh, speech pattern I can use to use calendar, I would tap the little arrow there and it gives me the different ways in which I could establish this. So Siri does require you to use certain phrases for it to activate something, right? Cancel Dr. Jones next week. Yes. It's off your calendar. All right. So I, I often go to that little question mark and I wonder how I can get something to happen, right? And I've said if I want to use maps, here's the different speeches different words I could use, like give me directions. And if I use the word home anywhere, it knows my address is in my contact information and it uses that address when I say, take me home or give me directions home. Give me directions to my son's house. Let me try that one. I'm gonna tap Siri. Give me directions to my son's house. Getting directions to David Crow home. Now he lives in San Jose, California, so it's going to be a rather <laughs> extended <Wow>. trip. <laughs> there you go. All right. 
Wow. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send all of you a, um, can't see, you looking, can you see a picture of me? Probably not. Yeah. You can? Hey, I'm going to send you this okay. list over an email and it contains a whole lot of series suggestions in, in it. Okay. So I will send you that uh, as soon as the meeting's over. So you're all on, on uh, mute right now. So I'd like you to try to schedule a meeting, put, a, put this meeting on your calendar, schedule a meeting with, with Bill next Saturday at, at uh, 10 o'clock. I'd like you to try that. Using that terminology, schedule. Hey, Bill. Yes. So interesting. I already have it on my calendar. Yeah. And SIRI said you have a meeting, Stug iPad, that overlaps with this. Should I yeah. schedule your meeting next Saturday from 10 a.m. to 11 anyway? She's yeah. so smart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if you have things on your calendar, it really works well. By the way, if you have, um, you can add things to your contacts too. You can say, um, and you have this person's name in your contacts. You can say, my son is, and then give his name. And it will add that so you can use the word son after that without having his name to call him to send him an email or whatever right so if i did it on mine and i said hey siri mom should come up here <laughs> there we go send my son an email which one of these should I use for David Crow? So you notice I have multiple, oops. Sorry, I didn't quite get that. So Which I'm going to choose the subject of your email. Test message. What would you like your email to say? Hope things are going well this weekend. Have a great Labor Day. Here's your message to David Crow. Send. To send it. Send. Okay, I'll send it. Now you'll notice I sent an entire email using Siri and didn't have to type. Now I could have said send an email to Ann. What's the subject of Oops. the email? <laughs> I don't know if she's on. <laughs> what would you like your email to say? I want to cancel that. <laughs> cancel that email. Bill? Here's your message to Cheryl Ann. I want to cancel. Okay, I won't send it. Send a message to Ann. No, it keeps coming up. Keeps coming up with the wrong thing. Okay. Let me know if there's anything else you need. 
Send a message to Peter. Which one? There's Peter Dobson. Which one? What do you want to say? Hi, Peter. How are you today? Here's your message. Ready to send it? Send. Send. Okay, it's sent. All right. Your assignment right now is to send me a message. This is going to be fun. <laughs> Bill. Yes. Um, Siri is not uh, coming up. I say, hey, Siri, and it doesn't come up. Do you have hey, Siri turned on? I do. Not sure why. It didn't come up on mine there for a minute either. So I, I, you just press and hold the button to get Siri. I believe you. <laughs> Press and hold what button? The, the home button. Is that an i? Is that a? That's the other way to get. Yep. iPad Mini. Okay, thank you. Yep. Send Bill Crow a message. Turn off your mic. <laughs> Turn off your mic. <laughs> thank you, Mike. Bill, I can't. I lost the whole shebang. I can't even. Press and hold the home button. What what are you trying to do this on? A uh, I'm on my computer and I lost computer. everything. I'm I'm at Zoom. This is Louise Cashman. Can you hear me? Yes. How can I help? I can see you, so Bill, I lost I lost you on my computer. You don't see the screen? No, there's a big a pictures across the top and then it says when system prompts, click allow. So click so I tried to sign in again. Click allow. Click allow. I'm sorry, but I, my screen just, I, I've lost everything. So I can see, and I can see you. But, Did you minimize I, it? Did you minimize I, Zoom? No. I have the one, two, th one, two, three, four, five pictures across the top, and then the rest of my screen is white. And it says when screen, when system dialog prompts, click allow. And I'm clicking allow. Somehow no. I lo lost everything on my computer. Well, hang up and call back. I'll let you in. Okay. How do I hang up? <laughs> okay. I just did. I okay. Hang up. Just hello, uh, Bill. Enjoying hello. the. Thank you. <laughs> How do I hang up? Uh, do you have the little toolbar at the bottom of the computer that has a Zoom icon on it? No. Wait a minute, let me see if it's at the top. Okay, here we go, Safari. Quit Safari, I'm gonna quit Safari. No, you're not in Safari, you're in Zoom. Okay, Zoom. Okay, quit Zoom. Yeah, click on Zoom, maybe it'll come up. Quit Zoom. Yep. Okay, oh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you, I'm sorry. Okay, quit Zoom, that's interesting. Okay. Let me know if there's anything else I can help you with. <laughs> okay. Now I can see you, but okay. So I've got a message from quite a few of you so far. One, two, three, four. Hello, Bill. Hello. Oh, you were talking to Zoom. Or, <laughs> you were talking to Siri. Yes. All right. Bill, yes. when we send you a message, do you know it's coming from us? Does it have our name or anything? It has either your name or your phone number. Okay, so you can have you would have to know our phone number to know who it's from. Like for example, I got one from five eighty six zero one eight five. 
And I got one from 447-3548. So some of you have your names, some of them have your phone number. If you're sending it to me in your phone, you, a lot of times it shows up the phone number. 781-929-8824. Okay. But it have to do with the so fact that you might not them. have them in your contact list? Contacts, correct. It could be. I don't have you in my contacts. Still now well, I'm I haven't responded. Is that why? Now I can't see your screen. Well, it's, I'm just seeing who's speaking. And then I got a tiny little thing at the top that shows the screen, but I can't read it. Hi, thumbnail, show. Can you no. expand the window? I'm trying. I can't. Oh, there I got it. Finally. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Peter, you had a question? Nope. Yeah, I haven't responded because I haven't got your email. I didn't send an email. I sent a message. But, oh, I'm sorry. Bill? Yep. If I'm not connected to Apple email, then you wouldn't receive it? Oh, no. This has nothing to do with Apple email. This is oh, Apple messages. Okay. All right. <laughs> did you get it, Peter? Yes, I did. Okay. Siri is still not listening to me. Well. <laughs> <laughs> This is what I have. Yeah. Do you have the little thing at the bottom? Look what happens when I get Siri up here. You see the bottom of the screen? Yes. And now I have a little globe down there, a little circle. I see the bottom of the screen. Okay. If you click that little circle, it will start recording what you're saying. And that's when you talk. I'm not sure I understand. <laughs> so watch, I'm going to click the little circle down here at the bottom. Ah. And when I click the little circle, it's listening and recording everything I'm saying. I'm not sure I understand. I don't have a little circle, but I do have the question mark. Get rid of the keyboard. How? There's a little keyboard at the lower right. Oh, okay. Hold it up. Do you have a little thing at the bottom? Anything at the bottom? Uh, it has a question mark and then it says type to Siri. Oh, do you only have type? Did you turn off voice to Siri? No, I did not. Are you sure? I'll go back and check. Yeah. I'm getting emails. I mean, I'm assuming, sorry, I'm getting messages. This is Joanne. Are we supposed to be sending you a message to your phone? Either one. It doesn't matter. I don't have your phone number, so I'm adding you in my contacts, um, but I don't. 941. Nine two one. Six eight eight five. I'm sorry. That's my home phone number. My cell phone number is 941-441-5158. Bill, this is yeah. what I see. And it says, it doesn't allow you to speak to Siri? It's not responding. No, no, it shouldn't respond here. 
I'll work on it. I'll work on it outside of this class. You know, that 3501925 number that's showing at the top of your um, left hand screen is not your number? No, that's somebody else's number. <laughs> number we're supposed to send to is the 441 number? Yeah. Hey, okay. Siri. Hey, Siri. I wouldn't try Hey Siri, just, is that a, an iPad Pro? Uh, no, it's just a regular. Has a home button at the bottom? Yes. You press and hold the home button to get Siri to come up. Hey Siri, okay. Siri here, let me know if I can help. Okay. Send message to Bill Crow. Send message to Bill Crow. Send a message to Bill Crow. There you go. So you need the wavy line at the bottom to make Siri work. Mm -hmm. Send a message to Bill Crow. What do you want to say? Hi, Bill. Enjoying class. <laughs> Here's your message. Ready to send it? Yes. So you there you go, you did it. It's sent. Yay. Okay. The only uh, typing for... Thank you, Siri. Um, the typing for Siri is over in an accessibility, not in the Siri section, if anybody's looking for it. Say that again, Bill. Turning on that you want to type to Siri is over in accessibility Siri rather than in the Siri section. Okay. And there is an a there is a accessibility and it says Siri on it. Yes. Yep. Under general. Yeah, the top one there says type to Siri. If you turn that on, it'll stop the voice input. Ah. Everybody hear that? Where's that? Accessibility. You go to accessibility. Scroll down clear to the bottom of accessibility where it says Siri. Click mm -hmm. that, and then type to Siri. Siri will listen for voice input when you press and hold the home button. Mm. If I turn that on, it doesn't re it doesn't uh, accept your voice. Oh. So if you've turned that on in the past, that's what's happening. Let's, let's, let me post this little warning. When you go to accessibility, be sure you know what you're doing because you can really mess yourself up <laughs> on a lot of these, you know? So instead of it operating normally, it may take different actions or different sweeps to make things work the way you used to have them work. On the other hand, there's some really good features in here. Do I have any questions about our friend Siri? I need you all to practice it. I'm sorry. Hey, Bill, yeah. I just wanted to uh, let you know with the, I don't know if anyone has the new iPhone or whatever, but if you hold down that side button and any other button on the left, you're calling 911. So I shut that off. And I. 911 or the Siri button? No, it's the, 
if you hold I understand this button and any other button over here and you have that turned on it automatically that right and if you don't now, no way it's not going to call right now because it's going to do my emergency contact right right but when i i did it and i still have the um the voicemail that the police called me <laughs> so that it will never happen again that's well, why you, i don't you, have that button turned on do it in your other hand if you use your look at the look at me on the screen mm -hmm. instead of this hand where you're going right. to hit the both buttons use the other hand and your thumb and you can stay away from those other side buttons it's very hard because you're grabbing the phone like this no no see how i've grabbed it yeah so my fingers are down low on the screen right on the bezel and then my thumb can then press it yeah don't hold it up here you're right but hold right. it and you can get siri by itself yeah Otherwise, i got some if you nasty the, messages from the police department <laughs> well you can also use the h-e-y-s-i-r-i -I, I know siri. right <laughs> that's what i use thank okay. you all right so just a general question about Siri. Um, I, I compared this with a friend of mine who has an Android phone. And when you ask Siri a question, he or she will often direct you to the internet rather than giving you a specific answer. Whereas my friend on the Android, when he asks a question, he gets a specific answer. Is this just a difference between the, the two platforms or is there a setting for Siri? No, no, that's the difference between the platforms. <clears throat> okay. Because the, the Android, I think, is what, what is it, Alexa? Uh, what, what is the... It, it's, it just seems to be a lot more specific. Yeah, it's Alexa. Yeah. All right, any other questions on Siri? Recommend you start using it, especially to schedule things. And, you know, I really find it much quicker and also to send messages. But you can say, hey, Siri, I don't have either of them on right now. <laughs> Is there any National Basketball League games today? Down. There's an example of what you just talked about, right? There's the actual schedule. Yes, exactly. Whereas I think when you ask uh, Alexa, it's much more specific. But you can do what's the score at, you know, what's the temperature in Omaha? It's currently 70 degrees in Omaha, Nebraska. Okay, what I'd like to do is now shift gears. <clears throat> we'll talk about something called calendar. How many of you have more than one email address? <laughs> Just hold up your hand if you have more than one, right? I have more than one email address, right? And things get a little more interesting when you have more than one email address. And that's because the email providers also give you other features. For example, Google gives you a calendar and an address book as part of their service. I'm not sure about Yahoo, but I can go check here. Hold on. Yahoo gives you a calendar contacts and reminders and notes. So if you go to settings and passwords and accounts, 
you'll get a list there of all the accounts you have. So everybody go there, settings, passwords and accounts. Okay, shake your head. Yes? Okay. You'll see that I have, most of us have an iCloud account. Don't recommend you delete that. But I have a Hotmail account, an Outlook account, a Crow 11 account, my wife's account. So I have all these accounts on my device. And I'll talk about why I have my wife's account there in a minute. So I have all these different accounts on my device. And for example, Hotmail, only per, I'm only looking at the mail. I don't use the feature they provide for me for other things, like contacts, calendars, and reminders. If I go down here to AOL, you'll notice it's, it's quite limited. It only has a mail and notes capability. So I didn't show you this to get you confused. I just got it, did it to show you what features you have on your phone. For example, down here is my Gmail account. And I said, hey, Gmail, I'd like to use not only your mail feature, but I'd like you to use an address book or contacts list. And I'd like you to have a calendar from you, OK? And when I go to settings, passwords, and accounts, I get to see what I've selected to use on all the different ones. So you'll notice, for example, I have contacts in my Gmail account, in my wife's account, and in the iCloud. I don't have contacts from any other sources. In other words, I have three address books. I also have one, two, three calendars. Now, if you have multiple accounts, if and only if you have multiple accounts, which account are you sending your emails from? Which account are you adding addresses to in your contacts? So if you have multiple of these things, you have to set up a default. So if I go into mail and I scroll down the mail, right? I went, I went, I'm in settings again, back to settings if you're in an iPhone and go down to mail. And if you have more than one email account under the comp composition composing, it will have default account. And you want to make sure that default account is the one you're using that you want to have people send back to. Because that's the one when you send them an email, that's the one it will, it will tell them you sent it from. The same with contacts. If you go into contacts, and that's in settings right below mail. settings right below mail, there's a default account. And that's the one that I have my contacts in. I had some people who had, I'll cover that in a minute. If you go to calendar, it's the same thing. If you scroll down in calendar, it says, what's your default calendar? When you make a calendar entry, where does it go? When you make a contact entry, where does it go? Okay, so now that we've got that, I'm gonna go back to my... <clears throat> Question, Bill? Yeah. Is there a reason why you don't use iCloud, the Apple uh, default? Yes. Okay. 
for my for my calendar, for example, I would prefer to use Gmail so that it's easy for my wife and I to share if she doesn't or anyone to share our information if we don't all have iPhones. Okay. Okay. So the reason I, I, I've chosen Gmail is it works across all devices. Related question to that, Bill. Mm -hmm. um, when you send out the um, invitations to the workshops mm -hmm. and the confirmation comes back that you're registered, it does not include the iCalendar. It automatically goes to three calendars, but not the Apple version of the calendar. Is that intentional or an oversight or? I don't know. So when you try to add it to your calendar, it doesn't include iCloud. Correct. That's because I've sent it from Gmail and it doesn't know it would be your iCloud calendar. Is your iCloud calendar the default? I don't know. I have to look at that right now. Um, but um, I only have that one calendar. I, I only use it. You're actually using my Comcast address, not my iCloud address to, to for messages regarding Stug. Right, but it's it's on your device, and it's uh, it should be looking at what calendar to put it in on your device. I'm not sure how that works. Okay, I stumped you for. A yeah. <laughs> I... <laughs> okay. Well, I'm usually stumped. <laughs> won't, won't be the last time today. <laughs> All right. Okay. So far, so good. So we're talking about calendar. So I'm just going to click on calendar and show you that I have in settings and back in settings again and calendar. And it says time zone override. I have that turned off. When my, my device discovers I'm in a different time zone, it adjusts the calendar accordingly. So if I had a meeting scheduled here at nine o'clock and I go to a different place, it'll now be at, so if I go to Texas, that's a one hour difference, right? And so it'll be at eight o'clock. I have alternate calendar turned off. Week numbers, I have that turned off. My week view starts on today. We'll get to what the week view is. Um, if, if you're using the calendar, you can show in, invite declines. Somebody invites you to a meeting. I, not many people use that. In business, it's used a lot. I want to sync all events. Right? Bill, Bill what does that mean? It looks like events two weeks back. It only goes back two weeks. If I go back and schedule something in the past, it doesn't do it on all calendars, on all devices. I assume that's what it means. I haven't, I haven't played with that one either, Peter. That's twice a day so far. <laughs> Start week on default is Sunday. My default calendar, delegate calendar, if you have, I can, I can allow my wife to set up a meeting or myself on my calendar, or delegate, I'm sorry. And location suggestions. Now based on where you are, it sets up the meeting. It's, as far as the time is concerned. All right. Now, what we're going to do is go to calendar. So I'm now looking at calendar. And if I look at the, the top, it shows the month, for example. 
here. Oh, come on. <laughs> Everybody sending me an invitation? <laughs> yes. If I look at the day, week, by the way, what did you guys do to have it send me an invitation? Should have asked when it came up. You can look at the day here at the top, and it shows you the day, week, month, and year. This is Abel Abel's <laughs> 12th birthday. I just put some an Abel Abel, right, person in there, January 1st, 2000, right? So I'm on January 20, 2012 right now, right? I go to the week. That's the week of January 1st, 2012. That's the month, and this is the year. So the first question you might ask me is, how do you go from day to day? You put your finger on the screen and you sweep from left to right. Oops, didn't quite work there. Yeah, there you go. Ah. Get the idea? Sweep from left to right. That's the way you go from day to day. To go from week to week, similar kind of thing. Put your finger on like Friday and sweep from, oops, come on. Put your finger on Friday and sweep from left to right. On your iPhones, if you're looking at calendar, and I'll go to, And the way in which you go to a day is you tap on the day. So I'm looking at a month and I tap on any one of the days and I get the day. If I want to go from week to week, I go this way. If I want to go from year to, from month to month, I go up and down. And if I go back, hit the back arrow at the top, or hit the, on the iPhone, hit the back arrow. On the iPad, if I tap year at the top, I can go up and down. And if I arrive at a particular month that I want, I tap the month. A really cool feature here is the magnifying glass. And if I'm looking for a meeting that I've had in the past with Dr. D, and wow. <laughs> All the doctor appointments that I've had for the past, well, since 2019. It only goes back two years, or one, it looks like only one year, mm -hmm. in terms of the search. What? I thought it was, wait a minute. I thought it was only one year. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I, I, you're, you're correct. Mm -hmm. I was playing with it last night, and I said, I want to go back further, and I couldn't figure out a way to get it to go back any further. The only way is to repeat. To repeat? Yes. How do you repeat? Repeat the events. So in other words, oh, 
Right. <laughs> yeah. All right. By the way, you see the microphone right here? Mm -hmm. Anytime you see that microphone, you can use a subset of Siri to do your typing. So if I click on that microphone and I say iPad, I'm going to do that. iPad. iPad. And now, whoops, and now it's found all the events that I have over the past year that had iPad in their title. You can use that microphone anytime the keyboard shows up to use that subset of Siri. So if I'm scheduling an event, oh, I have it. Uh, let me do it on my iPhone. <laughs> Keyboard's there. I don't have the microphone. There it is. See the microphone there at the bottom? Yes. If I click that microphone, I can speak and it will take whatever text I'm speaking and put it up there. And Marsha just clicked it and did my recording. <laughs> okay. And since we're looking at schedule, well, I'll get there in a minute. All right. So we're going around the screen. I don't want to hit the, the plus sign yet. We'll talk about that in a minute. At the bottom of the iPhone and the iPad, it says today. On the left, and it says inbox on the right. So I can go directly to my mail from here. And it sees all those meeting invitations. How did you folks send me a meeting invitation? No one's going to speak, Rita? <laughs> Nobody wants to tell me? Okay. You have to turn on your mic if you want to talk. <laughs> Bill, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, this is Barbara. The reason is because you told us to schedule a meeting with Bill Crow next Saturday at 10 o'clock. So I yeah. think we all did that. That's why it also wow. put it That's... on your calendar at the same time. Well, it didn't put it on my calendar. It just sent me a, a, a thing so that I could do that. Okay, well, whatever it is, that's what we all did. We did what you said to do. <laughs> See what I got. No, I didn't get scheduled there. Oh, wait a minute. No, not yet. But it says conflicts with three uh, three other events are also scheduled for this time. <laughs> okay. Bill, I scheduled a meeting through Siri, and it only went to my main calendar. It didn't go on my Google calendar. Ah, which one? No. What's your default calendar? I don't know. That's where it's in calendar, settings, calendar, default calendar, settings, calendar. And then you scroll down to where it says default. The only choices I have are home and work. And it has home checked. And that's the only one you be... want. That's the only one you want. Don't, don't, don't set up more than that right now. Okay, mine says Gmail, but it doesn't go on my Google Calendar. How do you know? Because I have it in front of me. I scheduled a meeting and it didn't go on it. Okay. Now, the second thing I want to point out to everybody is at the bottom of the screen, and I'll bring my mouse pointer, at the bottom of the screen it says Calendars. See that? 
And this reflects on which calendars you're actually looking at. And before I click there, I just want to explain something. If I have more, and I have more than one calendar, I think you saw that. You can, you can say, I would like to look at all of my calendars or these two calendars, and I'd like to integrate them or, or have them work, have them shown to me merged. Okay, so let me click on my um, iPad calendars. And you'll see here, I have a whole bunch. There's the iCloud calendar. I don't have any of those clicked. I didn't want to use iCloud. There's my wife's calendar. So I have hers integrated or merged. And there's mine, and I have US holidays on mine. Right, and I have Siri and birthdays turned on on other. Okay. Now, uh, Sharon, if you don't have Google calendars turned on here, you won't see it. How do I turn Google calendars on? Click the little check mark right there. Now, you'll see Google calendars in the background here. If I click that, watch what happens to the background. All those items disappeared. I no longer can see those. All I have are my wife's appointments. And now they're back. OK? So what happened to Sharon, what happened to a lot of people is they're scheduling a meeting and it doesn't show up. So they schedule it again and it doesn't show up because they're scheduling it on one calendar and viewing a different one. Bill, mm -hmm. I see, I see, oh, it went away. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Just call anytime. Okay. <laughs> All right. There's a couple of items when we talk about scheduling in a meeting. And we're going to do this one without Siri. We're just going to do it by hand. A couple of things that people don't know are there. First of all, you, you would have to say who it's with and when it's being held. The other two features, which are quite nice, are location of the meeting and is it a reoccurring meeting? And, and that's a little more advanced feature. So let's go in there and click the plus sign and we'll just type in iPad class. Come on, <laughs> right? Now, if you had a location, and this is a good one if you're having to go to a new location, you say, well, where are we having that meeting? You're having it at, and you can put an address. I'm gonna put mine in here, 6234. Because I use that frequently, it shows up here in map locations at the bottom. So I'm gonna check that now. That's where it's going to be held. Okay. And you could put your own home address in there. The next item down there is, is it a convention where you're going to be there all day? So you would turn that on if it was a convention, right? And the next item down is where it gets a little more interesting. If I tap it on my iPad, where it says starts, 
it comes up and shows you today. <laughs> We got the wrong year. That's an interesting one. <laughs> oh, I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to tap today at the bottom left of my calendar. So it takes me to this year and highlights today. And now I'm going to add an event. And then you use your finger to change the, the day, right? And you'll notice how I, ex some people just go to the edge of the box and stop like that. You can go clear up the screen, right? So I'm gonna say it's Saturday the 12th. And we tap 11 and we make it 10. So that's set. We're going to use the New York time zone. And you see where it says ends? We click ends. And we're just going to scroll up and make that 12. Oops. And the other feature here, if I put my finger up here somewhere and, and uh, down here where it says time zone and I pull up, you'll notice the menu scrolls up with me. If I put it in this area, it will start changing these items. So I have to put it my finger or touch it outside of that area. And it says repeat. Now this one gets a little more interesting in that if I click where it says repeat and never, it comes up and says every week, every month, every year. So it's going to be every week. Okay, so now if I click add, it's going to add that event starting next week and go forever. Repeat every week. And now it will repeat that event every week forever. So you need to end the repeat. So you say end repeat. and repeat, and it's on a date. And in this case, it's uh, September 26th. So again, we go September, and we make it 26. Now hang with me, because here's where everybody makes a mistake. And then they then you have to click the back arrow at the top and click add. Oftentimes people people forget to click add and they don't end up with the meeting. Okay? So if I click add So now I've added it starting next week. <laughs> Have it in there a few times. All right. Now, what's the advantage of putting the location in there? Let me show you. 
If I go ahead. Question. Look it up and I'll give you directions. I can, it's even better than that. I bring up the event and if I tap on my iPhone, you'll notice the red area right here. If I click on that or tap on it, it would bring up the map and I can get directions to get there. I think I can get there in about a minute. <laughs> okay. You know, oftentimes I go out and uh, help people with their computers and they're in the middle of these uh, uh, HOAs. And it's a left and right, left and right to get buried in there somewhere. And to get out, I just say, hey Siri, take me home. <laughs> Where are you going? It says end navigation. <laughs> Okay. I have a question about repeating the date. I have discovered that if the date, if you have put a date in and something on a particular date and you ask it to repeat, if that date is not the same day of the next time, it will, or at least another month, it will change what you're doing. I mean, exactly. it puts it on a different day. And I don't, is there, I don't know if there's an option for the date. It's, a, it's the same day every month, the same date every month, right? Same day every month, but if that day changes date, you get a different day. Also, if you have it on the same date, if it changes, if that date changes in the month, it, it doesn't, it stays with the old. I understand. Bill, you go into customize. Is that what you do? Let me try yep. that. So if you have a meeting the third Wednesday of every month, you can customize it. So here I have one. Thank you. And it's repeat. It took me a while. And it's customize. Ah. All right. Yep. And then you pick the frequency every week or every month. So it could be every week on Saturday or every month on the third. Good. I also have a, I have a Google calendar. Now this is going on to my Google calendar. Okay, when I open it up to add an event, I have, and this is fairly new, under Add Guests, under the title Add Guests, I then had Add Video Conferencing, and it has a little camera. <laughs> That's Google's attempt to uh, do something like Zoom, I think. All right. Let's see if I've got any more I want to cover. Bill. Go ahead. Uh, I wanted to put alerts in for my iPad class, and I wanted to put also a second alert. <laughs> it won't. Well, no, I'm funny that way. But I want the first alert to be two hours before the meeting. I want the second alert to be 30 minutes before the meeting. And they're backwards. I have a 30 minutes before and the second alert is two hours before. Does that matter? I didn't know you could do multiple for first of all. So that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I want to make sure that I'm up and dressed. I understand. You know, and then 30 minutes before, I want to make sure the cats are fed and <laughs> <laughs> that can be an issue there. But you can't put the first alert. It says alert one hour before and the second alerts one day before. So you can't reverse those is what you're telling me. 
I, I've tried and it okay. won't, it won't let me do alert two hours before. Okay. I'm do I'm doing it. And then the second alert 30 minutes before. Yeah, and it reverses it. And then it reverses it. So if, if it works, that's what we do. Oh, okay. Okay. Think, we'll, we'll check it for next week. <laughs> so so. If, if you're not dressed properly, we'll know you didn't. <laughs> You'll know it didn't work. <laughs> okay. All right. Have I any questions about calendar? The next line at the bottom of your uh, iPhone, a picture it says busy. If someone tries to contact you, they get the response that you're busy because it's on your calendar. I'm thinking, I don't think it does that because I've gotten phone calls. I, Bill, I think what it does is if you say busy, it will uh, notify you. It will tell you when you can put a conflict in, but if right. you've got something like it, like if I had a notice, like I was, uh, I made an event that I was in Sarasota for the, the two months I was down there, I left it as free. So that just allowed me to schedule other events without with getting the, the notice on the calendar. Without getting notified. Yeah. Okay, it's just to avoid schedule conflicts then. Yeah, it's to avoid conflict. But you can still do it. Okay, thank you. Okay, kitties. Anybody else? Please start using calendar, it really helps. Now, one other thing, you know, you noticed that I was getting my wife's calendar as well. And the reason is to avoid conflicts. My wife's scheduling an eye appointment at the eye doctor and she's gonna need a driver. She brings up the appointment and it says, she has a conflict because my appointment, I've got a class scheduled then. And so she's not going to schedule the eye doctor because she's also looking at my calendar. And when I go into calendars, on my iPad, for example, you'll notice out here they're in different colors. You probably may not be able to see it on yours. Okay. Right here, this event is my wife's event. And the little dot is a different color than my events. Hers is yellow, mine is green. And watch what happens if I go into my calendars and I shut off my calendar. Okay. She has a few less appointments than I do. But there's hers. Okay. So it really helps for us to coordinate our calendars and make sure one's available when needed. <laughs> okay. All right, general question for everybody. I'm gonna switch gears now. And I've got five little reminders there that I'm supposed to go that I have a conflict. <laughs> 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 you guys are okay. Right? I learn things every day. Jeez. The sharing of calendars only works for people with iPad, with iPhone. No, I, no that, that's sharing. That's family sharing. Sharon, 
that's family sharing. The way we do it, because she may not have an iPhone, she may have an iPad, I'm sorry, an Android. Um, the way we do it is through sharing, is through allowing me to look at her account, her Gmail account, and we're sharing, she has a Gmail account, I have a Gmail account, and we can share it across devices. If I, had an, I, if I had an iCloud, it would be a different story. You're right. Okay, but if I have a um, Gmail account, and my daughter has an AOL account, I can't share anything that way. Well, she doesn't, your AOL doesn't give you a calendar capability. But I'll what about her Android phone and a calendar she might use on her Android phone? If it's a Gmail calendar, you could get to it. By adding her Gmail account to your phone. And so if it's an Android only, then it's only going to be on that device. Be like having the calendar just on the iPad. Okay. I don't know how I'm going to get rid of that five on uh, over here. <laughs> I'll have to work on that for next time. Decline the invitation. Oh, is that what I have to do? No. I'm not the expert. I just thought I'm, that was logical. Yeah, well, that would be logical. Here we go. Wow. Nope, I don't see it here. We'll play with that for next time. All right. Uh, we're going to switch gears now to Safari. Okay. And I have a general question I usually ask at this point, and I just need you to think about it. And somebody press the Turn on the mic and tell me what you think it is. What's the difference between a browser and a search engine? A browser is something that lets you look at something on the internet, a particular thing on the internet. A search engine allows you to search everything on the internet. Okay. That's not bad. That's pretty good, Sharon. Thank you. A browser is allows you to go places on the internet. You can go to jcpennies.com. You can go to google.com. You can go to gmail.com. You can go to libraryofcongress.com. You can go to stug.org. Okay, so that's what a browser does. It allows you to access addresses on the internet. A search engine is a unique place on the internet. Google.com is an address on the internet you can go to, and it is a search address, right? DuckDuckGo is a, has a, is a search website. Yahoo.com is a search website. So the browser allows you access to the internet or gains you access to the internet, whereas a search engine is a unique place you go on the internet. So when I, when I go to Safari, Safari is a browser. Any other browsers? I bet Ann can give me one. Chrome. <laughs> Chrome. <laughs> Opera. Edge. Edge is one. Internet Explorer is one. Opera. Firefox. Firefox. Firefox is Biosat. one. What was that other one? Biosat. It's one I hadn't heard of before. DuckDuckGo is one. Okay. DuckDuckGo is the only one I, that I know of right now that does not track what you've done and try to commercialize your information. 
Opera. Opera, okay. So I'm gonna to go to Safari. Okay, so here's our browser. And at the top, the top bar up there on most browsers, the top bar looks something like this. And it tells you where you are. Mm -hmm. And it does the same thing on the, on, the, on the iPhone. It tells me where I am. Okay. Now be before I go any further, what I want to do is I want to go into Safari and just show you a couple of the settings. So let's go back to the home screen and go to settings. And what do you down. have on your iPhone? Say again? That was a particular website. Thank you. I, w I was just at a, I was doing a search on something. Right? Why isn't my timer alarm going off on my iPhone, on my iWatch, and it doesn't seem to be working? So I've got to look that up later. So if I go to settings and I scroll down to where it says Safari, okay, there's a whole lot of different settings for Safari, and we're not interested in all of them. If I do a Siri, Siri search, do you want us to go to Safari, right? Yes, I do. What language am I be using? An interesting one, you know, I'm, I'm gonna switch my iPhone back to Safari. You see the top bar at the top there on my iPhone? If I tap up there, and I type in uh, when was Abe Lincoln now it's giving me the answer to that question already I know I spelled it wrong. And I tap go, it takes me to a search engine to give me the result. And you'll notice mine is DuckDuckGo on my phone. On my iPad, it's Google. In other words, if I type something in this, the address bar that is not a valid address, it takes me to a search engine, plugs in whatever I've typed into the search engine search bar and completes the search for you. So this is where the two kind of come together. I'm in a browser. I type something in the browser address and I tap go and it says I couldn't find anything that was <laughs> that messed up, but it took me to DuckDuckGo. If, just watch for a second, if I do that same thing over here and I type in something that's, and I tap go, it takes me to Google. You notice it says Google there. Mm -hmm. And it says duck, duck, go here. That's because back in settings, Back in settings, it says, my search engine is Google here and DuckDuckGo here. And if I click the little arrow there, I have the choice of which search engine I would like to use. Bing, Yahoo, or DuckDuckGo, or Google. So DuckDuckGo is a search engine as well as a browser. No. No, it's a search Duck, engine. DuckDuckGo is a search engine. Did I say it was a browser earlier? I made a mistake. Yes, I thought it was a browser. No. I, I made, that was my mistake. It's a search, it's a website you go to. 
It's not in the same category as, let me think for a minute, as Edge, Internet Explorer, uh, Firefox. Okay, Bill. Chrome. <laughs> Go ahead. You, uh, w when you started this, you said Safari was a browser and another, other examples were Chrome, Internet Explorer, and DuckDuckGo. No, are you saying? Cross off DuckDuckGo. DuckDuckGo is not a browser. That's correct. Okay. I'm Thank sorry. you. I'm sorry. It's a search engine. Okay. That's a search engine. But a Chrome, Internet Explorer, and Firefox are all browsers? That's correct. Okay, good. Okay, thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah. I'm easily confused as it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have search engine suggestions, Safari suggestions, quick website searches on, and preload top hits is on. Autofill with my contact information is on, but I have it off for credit cards. So if you're a website that's asking for your name and address, in a lot of cases, Safari will automatically fill it for you. I'd like everybody to turn on favorites. Make sure it says favorites there. And also make sure it says show favorites bar on your iPads. I have block pop-ups turned on. How do I get to favorites? Oh, you click the arrow and you should have a word called favorites there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Downloads go to uh, iCloud Drive. Show tabs bar is on. I have show icons and tabs bar. When you go to a website, they usually have an icon that's associated with the website. And so it'll show the little icon along with the actual text. Open tabs in the background. And I have closed tabs manually. And we'll talk about that a little later when we get to talking about tabs. I like to prevent cross-site tracking so that Facebook doesn't know everything that I've put into Google and vice versa, for example. <clears throat> Cookies. A lot of the time I have cookies turned on, but there are certain websites you go to that require you to have allow cookies. Anybody know what cookies are? We know what pop-ups are. If you run your mouse down the screen, you all of a sudden you get a pop-up here, a pop-up there. Things are always interrupting you. So it's, it's good to turn those off. But when it comes to cookies, cookies When you go to, a, let me start to explain what cookies are. When you go to a particular website, oftentimes it will want to save little bits of information on your device. Uh, a good example might be, I bought a pair of hiking boots a couple years ago from LL Bean. <clears throat> The boots arrived, they were really nice. I really liked them. About a month later, I, I 
went back to L.O. Bean and said, hi, Bill. You want some socks to go with those boots? And I said, boy, that's pretty, pretty good uh, commercialization. They remembered what I bought and they're pushing a product I would need because I bought the boots until I found out it was a cookie they had put on my device. I don't mind them advertising. I do mind them using my device as part of their commercialization, right? So they put a little item out there. It says you were an L.O. Bean at this date and you bought this so that they could advertise the next time I logged on. Now, a lot of that has stopped. But one of the ones that's there a lot is the banks. The banks say, hey, you logged on to the bank successfully from this particular iPhone or iPad or computer. And they put that in the cookie that's saved on your device. The next time you go to the bank and you put in your password, they check to see if that cookie is there. And if it is, that's an authenticity. It's a, another form that says, hey, you've logged on to the bank from this device before. So you're not logging on, somebody else isn't logging on from their computer in China or New Mexico. Great. Okay, so that they're saving that information. And oftentimes if you don't, if it's a new device, they may ask for your mother-in-law's name and you know, <laughs> what town did you grow up in? Today, they've added a second authenticity by sending you a, a code to your phone. And you would use that. So I have cookies turned on for many of the sites that I go to because they require them to be on to conduct business with them. The next item down there that I think is pretty important is clear history and website data. And this clears every place you've been and all the cookies and everything you may have accumulated over time. All right, so I'm gonna skip the rest of those and I wanna go directly to Safari. Any do you questions? recommend using that clear his history and website data? I do, about once a week or so I go in and just tap that. Now, don't do it right now, everybody. Do not do it. I'll read really it, Bill. That's okay. But <laughs> I just want to point out some things. Okay. All right. So far, so good. We're going back to Safari now. So, do you have time for a question? Oh, I do. I do. Um, I was trying to change the location from my iPhone to the cloud and yes. I, I seem to get blocked when I select cloud. There's probably another step that I'm supposed to use. Are, that you, are you using the iCloud right now? If you don't know if you're using the cloud, go to settings. Go to settings. Tap your name at the top. And it says iCloud there, tap that. And make sure you have Safari turned on for the iCloud. Yes, I do. And make sure you're backing up. You have iCloud Drive turned on? Yes, I do. I have 200 gigabytes. Whoa. Then I'm not sure. That's what I'm paying a monthly fee for. And I've, so far I've used 72 of them. But 72 gigabytes? Okay. Yeah. And you're doing the iCloud backup. So I am not sure or then. Maybe it's automatic. I don't have to worry about the settings in Well, it in you should be able to turn it on though in Safari. And it's not allowing you to do it, is what you're telling me. Well, I can select it, but then it's kind of, it still shows on my phone at the same time. So I just, I didn't know how to get out you, of that. You, you have an iPhone and iPad you're both doing right now? Uh, I have a, a desktop iMac and I have an iPhone. And 
and the iPhone, you cannot shift the settings. Well, when I selected I, the iCloud, it did not turn off the on this phone. You selected it where? On the computer? In the, no, in, no, in the uh, iPhone settings. You may have to exit and come back. Okay. All right. I'll try it again. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. If we go across the top of the Safari screen, we, I think we all know what the back arrow is and the forward arrow. It takes you to various sites, right? I'm going to skip over the bookmarks right now and go to the address bar. And here's where you can type in And there I have jcpenny.com, and I just, if I type that in and press enter, it takes me directly to jcpenny's. Just like dialing a phone, just like dialing a phone number on your phone, it takes you directly there. But if I type in a mess of nothing, it's going to take me to Google first. It says I'm plugging that in Google and here's the results of a Google search with that stuff. If I type in pennies and press enter, oh, it didn't even give me, I should type in penny, P-N-N-Y, right? And there's J.C. Penny. So it took me to Google first because I didn't put in a web address. I put in something, and it took me there. All right. Now I go to J.C. Penny's, and I find this wonderful bedding, and I'd like to ask my wife, would this be something we should get? Right. So now I'm on this address. See the little box with the arrow coming out the top? If I tap that, I can now mail that particular website address to my wife and say, does this look like? So I'll go to Patty. Right? How about this one. And I can send that to her. So now I have sent her that address. She's going to come in here in a minute and say, <laughs> what are you talking about? Okay. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Question? If I hit the plus sign, I can say now I'd like to go to uh, loc.gov, Library of Congress. Now I've gone to two places. And I'm actually talking to both places at the same time. Here's J.C. Penney's and here's Library of Congress. The term they use for that is tabs. Okay. So I have this tab open and this tab open. And if I hit the plus sign again, I can have a third tab and I'll go to Amazon. So now I'm at JC Penney's. Layout library. Oh, didn't go to the Library of Congress. Well, let me go there. There's Library of Congress and there's Amazon. And I can keep adding additional ones here. And you'll notice how I get this bar across here of all the additional ones. 
I can make this one go to Bing. And this one go to YouTube. Everybody get the idea there? Now, many of you may have a whole bunch of these. In fact, you may have arrows here at the end. Let me add a couple more so I'll end up with arrows. How many I can add before? <laughs> But you see all the different tabs I have here, and I could be dialing in to any all at one time. I think we all remember, some of us remember business phones where they had the little buttons on them, and you could be talking to multiple people. It's the same concept here, where I'm talking to J.C. Penney's, Library of Congress, Amazon, I can pick a favorites here, whatever um, frequently used sites, right? Get the idea going across here? Now, many of you may have a whole bunch of these. You should clear them off once in a while. Now, we could do it by going into settings, Safari, clear uh, history and website data. You can also clear it by clicking these little boxes here. If I go to that same place on my iPhone, and I tap the little boxes at the bottom, these are all the websites I have open whoa, on my phone. If I go here, oops, sorry. If I click on, come on. These are all the ones I have open on my iPad. On my iPad, I can get rid of one at a time by sweeping them from left to right off the screen. On my iPhone, I can get them by sweeping left to right off the screen. Now, for those that have 50 or more of them, it's a little difficult. And people complain about that. I tap done and I still have a lot of them open. If you press and hold those two little, if I press on those two little boxes in the upper right hand corner on the iPad, it comes up and says, close this tab, close I'm all of them. I'm in a computer class. Oh. Close all of them. Okay, thank you. Close all 15 tabs, and now they're all gone. Do the same on my iPhone. Oh, 64 of them. That would have taken me a while to get rid of them. Press and hold, and it says close all 64. So I cleared them all. Now we're going to cut there, and we'll pick up here on tabs, favorites, and any other questions you might have about Safari. Do I have any questions? Millions. Is Safari. Say again. Is, is Safari in the iPhone different than on the iPad? It's the same. Just, there's it, nothing that you showed on your iPad that I saw on my phone when I pulled up uh, Safari. I already have something in there that I didn't put. I it's, had the weather, and I didn't right, put the weather right. in. Right, right. Well, that's at the top. Did you say weather at the top? It went to, does it say weather at the top, Leah? What, uh, you're, I can't hear you, you know, like, your mic's off. Leah, your mic is off. Yes, it does. It says weather.com, but it was there when I pulled up Siri, I and I didn't put anything in. That's the, the last time you were there is where it was. Okay. But I've never been to weather to the weather on Safari. Uh, somebody has. Remember. Somebody has. Okay. I, I go to my weather app a lot, which is not. Right. I understand. And you may have clicked something in the weather app, which took you here. See, the weather app doesn't give you everything, so it takes you to the app. Okay? 
So that was, if I needed something else, if I wanted something else, that's where I would enter it. That's if, although it's not giving me the opportunity to do that. Tap the screen at the top there. The keyboard should come up. Okay. And just, just type, type it in. Okay. Type it in. Gotcha. Okay. Bill, are you saying that if you watch the little videos uh, on the weather app, and you're actually in Safari as opposed to in the weather app? I think so. Let me try it. You, you, which weather app are we talking about? Weather.com, the, the same one you were just showing, the weather channel. The weather channel? So I went to the weather channel here. You're on Safari now? No, not yet. No, oh, okay. Right. But if I think if I go someplace here, no, didn't go anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, you're definitely in the app because they're trying to sell you the premium. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no. Nope. I know. I guess it doesn't. I'm not sure how you got to the weather. I have a question about a sidebar I have. When I'm reading my book and I I swipe to the left to change pages, sometimes I get a very narrow sidebar. That's my safari, and it's aggravating, and I want to know how I can close that. You started too low down on the screen. And you got a second screen. Is that going to happen in any application I have that I'm going to get safari? Mm -hmm. hey, where's safari on your dock? On the far left. And that's where you're sweeping from, far left? No, I'm sweeping, sweeping from the right on the bottom, oh. or sometimes even in the middle. Well, and when I you shouldn't get it in the middle. But So you're in books, you're saying. I'm, I'm in my iCloud app. I, iCloud or books? I'm sorry, Cloud Library. And you're using this this particular app that does this? Well, that's I'm yeah. using Cloud Library. Ah. Lost your share and your your mic went. I go to Cloud Library ah. and when I'm using that. Yeah. You're you're going from cloud, you're adding another website somehow. And I haven't I haven't done that. We'll play for that next time. Thank we'll you. Go, we'll go to Safari and see if we get another one to come up. I go there. Yeah, we'll play with that. Okay. Thank you. But you're getting multiple screens. Okay. Any other questions? All right, folks. Have a great Labor Day. See you next week. Same time, same place, 8 o'clock. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> 10 o'clock. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Great session. All right. Yes. Thanks a bunch. Glad you enjoyed it. Thanks.